Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is episode 679, and it's going to be part two of what we were discussing last week, which was kind of a combination of the economic effects of COVID-19 pandemic on dental offices, but also things like the Great Recession and the other uh, things that we've had to deal with over the 40 years that I've been in practice. Before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko, and if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Also, all past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com and we're streaming live on Facebook. So I figured that out and hopefully you'll be able to hear it. We'll get the sound also. Okay, so in about 10 minutes, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business on Tuesday afternoon. Let me just give you the number. You can uh, save it for later. 614-459-9769. 614-459-9769. Okay. <clears throat> So, like I mentioned last week, I was going to go to the Franklin County uh, Medical Reserve Corps building, and I got my new ID badge. In fact, let me just hold it up there to the... Here, I'm wearing it so that I can put it up there and put it up... Uh, where did it go? There it goes. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> hard to get it to the camera. So, what that means is there's a chance when you are... When it's your turn to get your coronavirus uh, vaccine, it might even be me that is administering it. My wife got her badge as well. And so both of us will be at some of these events, um, volunteering in different capacities. And we are looking forward to that because this is so, so important. This is historic. It's absolutely historic that we have a vaccine so quickly that is safe and effective. And I want to encourage anyone who's thinking about not getting it to please get it. Uh, the research is sound. I want to make sure you understand if you're a woman, you will not become sterile. You can still have children. That was a completely uh, debunked myth. And... Um, uh, let me just uh, expand a little bit. Uh, there were a couple of women who um, had like a spontaneous abortion or something or miscarried uh, who, who was in the, they were in the study, but it turns out they didn't get the vaccine. They got the control and there happened to be about 26 women who either were pregnant when they were first screened or became pregnant later uh, who delivered their babies just fine, who did get the vaccine. Okay. So don't worry about that. And so let me see. So like I said, last week we kind of left off. I didn't know it was going to be a two-part show because I thought I would uh, have plenty of time to talk about everything. And I, I didn't. So we're going to do it today. Um, with the uh, Dr. Kavitko's question of the day, you always want to listen closely because uh, uh, I try to make the answers um, clear and precise. And they are about what we're talking about. And honestly, if you haven't even been listening, you can probably guess the answer based on my uh, choices that I'm going to give you. Okay. <laughs> So uh, we talked about um, how, what my office faced with interest rates and things in, 19, in 1980 when I opened and because of the oil embargo uh, with the Iran in 1979. And then we talked about, we kind of skipped to the uh, Great Recession, which affected everyone and affected my dental office uh, as well. But I realized after the fact and after the show, I missed some things. So let's talk about what did I miss. Um, I missed, I, I missed September 11th, 2001, also known as 9-11, the terrorist attack on New York City. And the question of the day is going to be related to that. What I was doing during 9-11 was a root, two root canals and two crowns on the same patient. And I remember hearing about a little uh, a thing that says uh, um, a small plane has hit the World Trade Center, and um, I'm working, and we had a radio on, and then eventually we had this little tiny TV down in the basement turned out to be huge jets that had been commandeered by terrorists. And so, you know, when that happened, uh, 
things just kind of came to a stop. It became very eerie. Um, business uh, business kind of declined. People didn't know what was going on. No uh, flights were allowed. No jets in the sky for several weeks. And um, we were in it together, like we talk about now with COVID-19. We were in that together as well. And so with every business kind of struggling and down, it didn't really feel so bad. It certainly felt bad seeing all those pictures and, and hearing about all of the people who had lost their lives. And of course, it made us uh, very, very angry. And um, it's the reason that we went to war. So to try to get rid of the uh, those terrorists. Now, uh, so that was in 2001. Um, there was one more recession that I missed. And that was uh, actually before this. I don't know how I got it out of order. But there was a recession in 1990 brought on by when um, the leader of Iraq, Saddam Hussein, invaded Kuwait, which was the start of the first Gulf War. And of course, uh, whenever something terrible happens, things go down. And uh, again, people get nervous. People start hoarding. Uh, we didn't hoard toilet paper back then for some reason. <laughs> we hoarded other things like water. But uh, I don't know what's changed in all those years, but for some reason now the most important thing to many of us is toilet paper. <laughs> Who knew? Um, and I also started thinking about how, you know, I um, uh, some of the things that just in my practice in the last 40 years, it's not always been recessions or pandemics that we've had to deal with. And so I thought, you know, it's kind of an interesting journey that I've been on since 1980. Um you think you're going to graduate from dental school, open your practice, and do dentistry, and just, that'll be it, right? You just do your, do your thing, be nice to people, do a good job, pay your bills, be nice to your family, you know, things like that, and that you won't have to worry about much except death and taxes, right? Which is what we both know are certains, certainties. But uh, along the way, there were a lot of bumps in the road, a lot of bumps in the road. And as I mentioned, we started with the... Uh, uh, the interest rates in 1980, and then we went to the kind of the when uh, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait, and uh, the Great Recession, the attacks on the World Trade Center, um, but also, I don't know if you guys know this, but I've actually, um, well, years and years ago, you know, I do IV sedation, so years and years ago, I was doing an IV sedation on this young gentleman, and when um, when we were finished, and these appointments take a little while, oftentimes it's a root canal or it's a wisdom tooth or a couple or more, you know, four wisdom teeth. And when he got up out of the chair, I happened to notice that he had like some something in his back pocket kind of bulging. A lot of people carry like big wallets that take up a big, big amount of space and they bulge, right? I didn't really think much of it at the time. But after he left, I was putting all of my things away, my uh, drug kit, you know, all the emergency drugs and the drugs that we use. And I couldn't find my bottle of Demerol. And I'm like, I wonder, where did it go? Where did it go? And it's like, oh my goodness, that bulge in his back pocket was my bottle of Demerol. Because I remember I had, uh, I, I said, are you okay? You know, I'm just going to run up to the next room for a second. Because uh, we were done and he was waking up. And he said, yeah, I'm fine. I just want to rest another couple of minutes. And I said, okay. So apparently when I left the room, <laughs> he stole the bottle of Demerol and had it in his pocket. So I immediately had to call the authorities, the Let's see, who did I call? I guess it was the uh, the pharmacy board or the DEA, one of those two, to say, what do I do? Never had this happen. I don't know what the protocol is for reporting that someone had stolen some of my controlled drugs. Oh, I know, I called the Columbus Police Department. That's right. <clears throat> and they said, okay, well, what's the patient's name? And I told them. And they go, oh, we're aware of him. So, you know, we're not going to assume that it was you. We're not going to, you know, blame you. We know, just report it. Um, this gentleman's been in trouble before and, uh, who, you know, little did I know I had like a drug seeker, but he did have a problem. He did have an abscess tooth that either, I forget if we extracted or did a root canal. So he needed care and he deserved drugs during the care. He just didn't deserve to steal them, <laughs> to take them home with him. So there's just been a lot of little like side stories over the years. And, um, that was a bit of a shock to me because I didn't even think that could happen. I just didn't realize that, I don't know, I guess I was naive. And about the same time period, and we're talking about the mid, I want to say, probably late 80s to early 90s, same time period, um, I got a call from a pharmacist, and because now I'm thinking about this, it's coming to mind. got a call from a pharmacist, and he says, um, yeah, Dr. Kavico, I just want to confirm this prescription. Uh, did you write a prescription for it? I'll make up a name, John Smith. 
And I feel sorry for John, the John Smiths out there because we use that name a lot. <laughs> anyway, did you write a prescription for John Smith for this drug? It was a, it was a narcotic. And I said, mm, no, but the name is familiar. I go, wait a minute, wait a minute. That name is very familiar. And it turns out it was a new front desk person that I had just hired. They only worked for about six days and then they quit. And I said, wait a minute, you know what? Turn that, turn that prescription over. Is there writing on the back? And he said, yeah. And I, I said, does it say X? I won't tell you what I wrote. And he goes, yeah, it does. And I go, oh, I know what that is. I went on vacation and I had a dentist covering for me and I left a handful of prescriptions behind that I had pre-signed so that that person who was a dentist but didn't yet have their DEA license could prescribe medication if needed while I was gone. And so it turns out that this new employee, they'd only been with me for, um, let's see, I think they only worked, what did I say, six days, something like that. Turns out on day two, they took one of those prescriptions, wrote it out to themselves, and, and, uh, and uh, filled it. And they apparently had done that multiple times before, um, they got, before the, oh, this one pharmacist uh, caught them. Isn't that something? So you think you can trust people, right? And it turns out uh, I couldn't. And so, again, I don't know. I guess I'm just naive. I, I give people a lot of latitude. I trust them. I treat people like gold. And I assume that if you show somebody respect, they're going to turn around and show you the same respect. And I would say that's a good policy in most cases, but apparently not with everyone, right? The problem is, is I don't want to treat everybody terribly just because a few people took advantage of a situation. So I do my best to uh, protect myself and to pr protect the practice from those kinds of things. And yet I don't want it to seem like uh, we're the Gestapo when you show up. You know, I'm not going to like quiz somebody or drill them. Are you going to steal? Are you going to do this? When I hire them, I just have to, I guess, be ready to respond when something happens. So uh, let me remind you, like we said, we're going to do the free flowers here in a second. And I'll just mention that what I was doing when 9-11 happened, the attack on the World Trade Center, those two 757 Boeing jets that crashed into the World Trade Center piloted by terrorists, I was doing two root canals and two crowns on one patient, which means I was very distracted. I had a hard time paying attention to the news because I had to do what I had to do. But anyway, before we do the contest, I'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kovitko's Question of the Day. All right, and you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. Uh, the question today, today we're talking about the economic effects of previous economic downturns, downturns including the Great Recession, COVID-19 pandemic on my dental office, and after the initial shock of opening my practice when prime interest rate was at an all-time high. The next major event that affected my practice was 9-11. What was I doing when those two jets piloted by terrorists hit the World Trade Center? Was I A, golfing, B, sleeping, C, jogging, D, two root canals and two crowns on one patient? Okay, winner's going to receive those free flowers from DeSantis Florist. The number to call is 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it though. I want to hear your mind. There's nothing else in the world tonight She said people don't take the time Hey, people don't take the time Hi, this is Keith Carlos, former NFL player, actor, and first male winner of America's Next Top Model. I got a question for you. Do you know how many dentists there are between here and Los Angeles? Well, I don't know either, but I fly over every one of them just to see Dr. Kavico on a regular basis. 
Check out my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavico on my Instagram page at Keith Carlos. Stay tuned to the reasons we smile with Dr. Kavico, the world's most compassionate dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavico. Are you tired of hearing what every business is doing to keep you safe? Well, me too, because they're all saying the same thing. Wearing masks, washing our hands often, and social distancing are the keys to keeping us healthy, and all businesses are doing that. But here at Dr. Kavitko and Associates, we do that and more. We have continuous air and surface pathogen reduction units inside our office that kill over 93% of the coronavirus and other pathogens. I bet you can't name another dental office that does that. Give us a call at 614-262-9588 or go to drkavitko.com. I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavico and Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavico for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavico, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko and Associates today. 614-262-9500. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. Okay, we're back. We have Angela on the phone. Angela called in with what we think is the correct answer to Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. Angela, what was I doing uh, during 9-11 uh, when those planes attacked the World Trade Center? D. Yep. I was doing two root canals. Anybody that knows me knows I don't jog. That would have been an easy one. <laughs> but I do sleep. <laughs> and I do golf. But uh, yeah, I was doing root canals. All right. So, hey, thank you so much. Uh, Angela, what do you do for a living? I always ask. I'm curious. Um, I work in surgery in a hospital. Oh, okay. Wow. So you're front line working, uh, working with through this pandemic. And thank you so much for what you're doing. I was able to get my vaccine on January 5th. I'm sure you got your first one by now. Yes. Great. Oh, good, 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 good. And I'm happy you made it. So thanks so much. Stay on the line though. We need to get information where those flowers can be sent. Okay. From DeSantis. Yes. And thank you so much. You're you have, very welcome. You have a wonderful talk show. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile, episode 679. And, you know, we're kind of talking about bad things, right? Now, I have this whole long list. And on one hand, you could say this is like a negative show. He's talking about all the bad stuff that's happened. But I have this feeling I've, you know, I'm not the only one and I'm not the one that thought of it. But, um, you know, anything that doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? So with there, anytime there's a negative, I try to make a positive out of it. And so I'll tell you what, we've been through so much. I feel like I'm Hercules or something. I feel like Arnold Schwarzenegger when he won Mr. World or whatever that was that made him famous. Um, and I've learned from every single one, and I want to continue to do that. So here are a couple other things that have happened. Uh, I think this was after 1990 and after the gentleman stole the Demerol and that sort of thing. We had a car that was clipped by a CODA bus crash into the front of my dental office. <laughs> People then cl will probably remember this. It just pushed it right in, and it smashed into the front window, and and uh, we couldn't use our front entrance for months. Uh, who knew, right? Go. To, remember what I said? Go to dental school, open up your practice, have a nice life, and then retire. Well, we've had a lot of things happen in the meantime, and I almost forgot about that one. But, you know, sadly, one of the things that happens when something like that comes up is, uh, guess what? Uh, first of all, CODA sends a representative, and you think they're there just to kind of get questions answered they're there to make sure that uh, you don't sue them there <laughs> and then somebody else from the city showed up and they condemned the entryway I thought they were there to help me too and they weren't they were just there to shut it down and tell me I couldn't use my front door which pretty much sucks but anyway see it didn't kill me did it, it made me stronger here's something that I think I talked about this when it happened uh, years and years ago it's not really not really that many years now that I think about it this was about three years ago maybe Maybe uh, something like that. I don't know if you guys know this, but I was attacked by ransomware. We hear about this all the time, and we kind of go, wow, that's terrible. I'm glad it was them, not me. Well, guess what? It was me. And it was one of those things where I showed up on uh, Monday morning, and uh, could nothing, none of the computers would work. Couldn't access any information. 
And we're doing all kinds of stuff, trying to figure it out. And then finally, somebody noticed on my office manager's computer, there was a little blinking uh, thing there, and they clicked on it, and it said um, something about, if you're having trouble accessing your files, uh, click here. And when they clicked there, it was ransomware. You know, it was the crooks. So I had to wind up paying $5,000 in bitcoins to these crooks somewhere in the world. We don't even know where they were. Another nine thousand to a computer company to recover my data, and then about forty-four thousand dollars to lock everything down to prevent a future attack. I'm still making payments on that. I'm still making payments. Isn't that terrible? You shouldn't have to go through this stuff, right? And um, but you know that's the world we live in right now. I wish, and I'm I'm going to predict. Hopefully, I'll live to see this happen. I predict there's going to come a day when there won't we won't have to worry about spam and viruses and ransomware that. And it won't even matter if somebody knows your social security number because we'll have figured out a way to make it uh, you know, impotent. So, for example, I'm thinking there may come a day when a child is born, they are assigned a number. That is your cell phone number. It is your social security number. It's a number that is unique to you, and it won't matter if anybody knows it. Wouldn't that be cool? If you're in government, if you work for the Social Security Administration or you work for uh, in cybersecurity, can you work on that, please? That would be awesome. <laughs> For us, think about, we see on the evening news every every night, somebody got, you know, taken by a scam, right? It's just crazy. Um, and so if we could stop that, that would be super, super nice, in my opinion. Okay. Now, I also discovered that this was maybe only two years ago. One of my employees was stealing money from another employee's purse. I didn't know who it was at first. Didn't even know it was, an, I, had to know, I knew it was an employee because I wasn't doing it but I didn't know who. And it took me a while to figure it out. We had the, the police came once. When it happened again, they came again. He said, you should get a security camera and hide it. And I did, but, uh, and although I thought I had her on uh, camera, it wasn't real clear and couldn't tell exactly if that was the right envelope. And she denied it right to my face with tears coming down her eyes, right? Telling me it wasn't her. It wasn't me, Dr. Kavitko. And then the way we found it is because she was uh, taking checks that had we, we'd received from the insurance companies uh, putting pay to the order of her name and um, depositing him into her account. We didn't know we'd been stolen from until we were like contacting the insurance company saying, why haven't we been paid yet? And they said, well, we paid you. Well, we don't have it. They said, well, we paid you. And we said, can you send us proof? They said, sure, absolutely. And they did. And when those, when the copy of the check arrived, it had uh, paid to the order of this young lady and it had my forged signature on it. Isn't that something? So, so you don't think about this, do you? <laughs> Next time you go to your dentist, you might want to ask him if he or she has any of these uh, kind of side stories that are kind of interesting and not necessarily cool to go through, but at least interesting. Um, I've got several more, sadly, and so, but it is time for us to go to a break. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, episode 679, and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am, and I just a little bit. You're too much for me. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Burn my glasses. <laughs> Okay, we're back. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode 679 of The Reasons We Smile. So another, oh, before I go
go any further, I don't want to forget. Good luck to the Cleveland Browns. I grew up in Twinsburg, and uh, you just can't help when you grow up in the shadow of Cleveland. You can't help but root for the Browns. It's been a very painful experience over my lifetime of rooting for the Browns. They were good before before they left and went to Baltimore, and then we got the new franchise. But anyway, hey, they who knows? They might just pull it off today. I don't think many people are giving them a chance to do it, but yeah, they they just could do it. We'll have to see. Go Browns! Yeah, my producer clapping. All right. So another thing that happened. This one was recently. So uh, I got a thing. Uh, we wear earphones. Ear, you know, the walkie talkies at the office. And I got a little thing in my ear that says, "Dr. Kavico, there's a representative from the Drug Admi- Enforcement Administration up at the counter. They want to talk to you." And I said, "Okay." So I come up, and they they're asking me these uh, these general questions like. Um, can we see your records of the drugs that you've purchased? Can we see your records of the drugs that you've uh, used? You know, how much was used, how much was waste, all of that. And they're perfectly, we're told all along that we have to have good records because if somebody shows to do an audit, shows up to do an audit, we have to have them. No big deal. So I'm showing her my records, and there was two ladies there. One seemed to be in training. And then, um, and then uh, we had her back to my private office, and we're sitting there talking, <coughs> and she keeps asking these questions, and I'm like, it, it wasn't, whatever I was answering wasn't satisfying her, you could just tell. So finally she just, she just came in, came out and said, oh, by the way, I'll tell you this. I use this narcotic cough syrup that I use to dissolve a Valium in it when I'm doing children to sedate them, okay? It tastes good, so kids will let you put it in their mouth and they swallow. So she says, um, she finally blurts out, why did you have two bottles of this in one week? I said, I didn't. She said, yes, you did. I said, no, I didn't. She said, well, yes, you did. I said, oh, wait, 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 wait. I just remembered. One of the, we did get a shipment of that bottle. And when I, uh, it was all, you could tell the bottle had broken. It was all uh, runny liquid all over the place. I didn't even open it because it was, um, you could tell it was broken and it was uh, just all inside the box, no longer in the glass. And I sent it back and I sent it back to the people I bought it from, which is a local uh, pharmacy uh, place. And I said, now make sure you do the paperwork to let them know that I'm not drinking this stuff, that we had a broken bottle and that we're ordering another one to replace it. They said they would. And so uh, when the women were there, I told them that story and I showed her, I said, look, we used it on this child and here it is, here's the bottle. And She goes, well, that would have been nice if I'd have known that before I came. So she called the pharmacy and called them and asked them why they didn't tell her. Maybe it slipped their mind, I don't know. But anyway, this is all like during patients. So I'm like saying, hi, Mrs. Jones, how are you today? And, you know, and going in and getting somebody numb and uh, being all happy, happy and tr- trying to do a good job for people. And, uh, you know, in the meantime, in between patients, I'm having a deal with the DEA. I hadn't done anything wrong. Somebody just forgot to report it. Anyway, and all this stuff was before COVID-19. <laughs> and of course, COVID-19, we're wearing masks and gloves and I've always worn a shield and we're, we're wearing the head coverings, right? And uh, uh, the gowns and uh, everything you can imagine. And that stuff's not free. It's actually pretty expensive, but we just do it because we have to. And with all of that said, all of that said, I do believe being a general dentist is still the best job on the planet. I do. And this is the best country on the planet, by the way. In fact, uh, for 2021, uh, dentistry uh, remains in the top 10 jobs in America. This is by U.S. News and World Report. Dentists, like myself, was number nine on the list. Oral surgeons were three. Uh, orthodontists were four. And uh, prosthodontists were five. And it looks like I have one minute to wrap this up. So, you know what? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And if you're dealing with some crap in your life, I think I'm allowed to say that, just, you know, uh, you'll, be, you'll be okay. It'll just, you know, don't let it get you down. You'll get through it. Be positive. Turn a negative into a positive, and you're going to be so much better off tomorrow than you were today. You're going to be so much stronger than you were when the day started. You won't even believe it. Believe it. Okay? So I think that is all the time I have. Let me see from my producer. Is he nodding? He's giving me the thumbs up. That means shut up, Dr. Kavitko. All right. So anyway, go Browns. Looks like that's all the time I have today. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at Dr. Kavitko. Please visit my office Facebook page and like us. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at thereasonswesmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is 
Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588 or send an email to speaking at TheReasonsWeSmile.com.